All right, guys. Well, hopefully this works this time. I know you guys don't know this because you're just starting to watch this video, but I just filmed this video and I made it about seven minutes, eight minutes into it, and it just cut off. My whole camera just cut off and quit. So anyways, we're going to start this back again, guys. So welcome for the first time for you, the second time for me, and um, we're going to be looking at Hebrews 3 today, guys. Thank you guys for joining me. You already know God is so good, guys. He's always working on us. He's always moving in this world, He's moving on our hearts and all of that, guys, and it's so amazing. And I know you guys feel the same way. That's why you join me every day for this chance to share in His Word and the beauty that it offers us, guys. Um, let's pray. Heavenly Father, thank you for waking me up today, God. Thank you for being willing to listen to this prayer a second time, Lord. Please allow my camera to work right, God. I thank you for this chance, Lord, to profess your name, profess your word to this world, God. I can't thank you enough for the life that I get to live, Lord, the people in my life, the salvation experience, just all of it, Lord. I just, I want to open my heart up to you, God, and just let you see all the things that I am so grateful for. Sometimes I forget to say them out loud, Lord, but I am just so filled with gratitude for everything, God. I would ask that this video, Lord, be a nourishment to your flock, and I would ask that it be able to reach someone out there, Lord, who is still lost to the grasp of the enemy and the lies of sin and the world and secular carnality and the nature of the flesh, Lord. Allow us to be bold Christians, Lord, to profess your name and your love and your words, Lord, that shine your light into this lost and fallen and darkened world, God. Allow us to be more productive, more dutiful, more passionate workers in this great commission that you have laid out before each and every one of us, the Lord. Help us to live as that city on a hill, Lord, that is bright and shining. Help us to live in a way that is a sweet-smelling sacrifice that wafts up to your throne, God. We want only to please you, Father. I pray for a hedge of protection around the lives and a blood covering over the hearts and minds of children in the infirm and anyone in it, unable to do so for themselves, God. Help us to live in a way that glorifies you, God. And I pray all of this in your heavenly and holy name. In Jesus' name, amen, guys. God is so good, y'all. He really is. Let me hurry up and get this started, and we'll see if my camera works this time. All right, guys. So, the son was faithful. There, verse 1. <clears throat> Therefore, holy brethren, partakers of the heavenly calling, consider the apostle and high priest of our confession, Christ Jesus, who was faithful to him who appointed him, as Moses also was faithful in all his house. For this one has been counted worthy of more glory than Moses, inasmuch as he who built the house has more honor than the house. For every house is built by someone, but he who built all things is God. And Moses indeed was faithful in all his house as a servant, for a testimony of those things which would be spoken afterward. But Christ, as a son over his own house, whose house we are if we hold fast the confidence and the rejoicing of the hope firm to the end, Therefore, as the Holy Spirit says, Today, if you will hear His voice, do not harden your hearts as in the rebellion in the day of trial in the wilderness where your fathers tested me, tried me, and saw my works forty years. Therefore, I was angry with that generation and said, They always go astray in their hearts and they have not known my ways. So I swore in my wrath, they shall not enter my rest. Beware, brethren, lest there be in any of you an evil heart of unbelief in departing from the living God. But exhort one another daily, while it is called today, lest any of you be hardened through the deceitfulness of sin. For we have become partakers of Christ if we hold the beginning of our confidence steadfast to the end, while it, while it is said, Today, if you will hear his voice, do not harden your hearts as in the rebellion. 
For who, having heard, rebelled? Indeed, was it not all who came out of Egypt, led by Moses? Now with whom was he angry forty years? Was it not with those who sinned, whose corpses fell in the wilderness? And to whom did he swear that they would, they would not enter his rest, but to those who did not obey? So we see that they could not enter in because of unbelief. Reminds me of the verse, Lord, Lord, I believe, help my unbelief. You know, there's degrees, right? All right, guys, so, I'm so weird what my camera did earlier. But anyways, guys, thank you guys for joining me, man. The Lord really is great, guys. I get a, I am living the life right now, y'all, that, I know I say it often, guys, but I just, I don't even recognize it at all. Like, I was such a different person. And Jesus, man, Jesus is the difference, guys. All right, guys, so thank you guys for joining me. What a blessing. What a blessing and a nourishment this epistle has been so far. And that holds true for today and chapter 3 as well. So often we place things upon a pedestal, and ten to one we should not. With today's reading, and in particular the opening verses, point truthfully to the superiority of Jesus Christ over Moses even. The author touches on the truth that the builder exceeds the building, the creator greater than the creation itself. It's logical. Following that same path, the Son exceeds the servant. Also, before looking at verses, I'd like to touch on the word consider from verse 1. Let me read that little portion. <clears throat> Therefore, holy brethren, partakers of the heavenly calling, consider the apostle and high priest of our confession, Christ Jesus. Consider. So that's what I want to talk about. It's that word, consider. For one to consider is to look at, observe, contemplate, to fix or hold one's attention in such a manner that the very significance of the thing is learned, discovered, or understood. I'm going to read that again to you guys because, look, I think a lot of times in the world nowadays, or maybe this is just in my own heart, when I hear people say consider, or I myself say the word consider, a lot of times I mean I kind of glanced at it. I guess that thought rolled through my head like, you know, I'm thinking about ways to do things. And so I've considered this way and I've considered that. But really what I've done is just kind of thought on them for a second. But but let's look. Let me read that definition of consider again to you guys. So for one to consider is to look at, observe, contemplate, to fix or hold one's attention in such a manner that the very significance of the thing is learned discovered, understood. All of creation in, exists in such a way as to naturally reveal the Creator to any who would but look openly. When we with intent place our focus upon Christ, this aids us in seeing just how much greater He is than any other. Even a servant like Moses, who lies at the very center of the Old Covenant. More important than that. That's why he says, you will love me in a way that will make it look like you hate your father and your mother. What we have to give to Jesus is so supreme to anything else because what Christ gave for us was so superior to anything else, guys. All right, verses 1 and 2. Therefore, holy brethren, partakers of the heavenly calling, consider the apostle and high priest of our confession, Christ Jesus, who was faithful to him who appointed him, as Moses also was faithful in all his house. So, while Matthew and the like were Christ apostles, Jesus himself was apostle to Father God. He was his messenger. The Father's final and authoritative messenger, that was Jesus Christ. Throughout Hebrews, 12 times Jesus is called high priest. The high priest for those who would believe. A priest bridges the gap 
between man and God, between the divine and the natural, right? Well, who better than he who is fully human and fully divine? Personally aware of both sides, capable of bringing us Father God's divine message and willing to shoulder all our woes and bring us before the Father. As high priest, Jesus oversaw the ultimate sacrifice in his very own person. 3-6, guys. But Christ, as a son over his own house, whose house we are, if we hold fast the confidence and the rejoicing of the hope, firm to the end. All right, guys, so here we see Moses was in the house while Christ is over the house. This is another key indicator of the supremacy of Christ. Now, to hold fast is to grasp what is already ours, what is already yours, and to secure it within one's own life. We want our faith to be there in thin times, in trying times. Like love, faith is sort of a use it or lose it type of thing. Walking in our faith daily is spiritual exercise and self-edification. The good part of self, the part that is seeking God. 3.8, guys, verse 8. Do not harden your hearts as in the rebellion in the day of trial in the wilderness. So I speak of this often as it touches me personally. I hardened my heart and stiffened my neck for years. Each time the Spirit speaks to one and they refuse to respond, a hardening takes place a little harder a little harder, and sadly, in time, this pattern can lead to a ultimate hardening and a reprobate soul, a point where belief is no longer even possible. Verse 13, guys. But exhort one another daily, while it is called today, lest any of you be hardened through the deceitfulness of sin. He says, don't wait until tomorrow. Not tomorrow. Today. Do this today. To exhort or to encourage. Those of the faith ought to uphold and encourage each other daily, lifting and ever strengthening one another to endure when faced with the trials and tribulations of life which are inevitable. Let's also look at the deceitfulness of sin because that's something that I can testify to with absolute certainty. Sin promotes the lie, the illusion that the willful disobedience we practice is more enjoyable or secure than some crummy old walk of faith and belief, of some lousy old time where one has to be obedient and devoted. That's what we whisper to ourselves when we want to remain heart of heart. We whisper to ourselves, no thanks, I'm no sucker, I'm going to go do me. Nobody else is going to do me, I'm going to look out for me. Sadly, many live this way past the point of return, prideful until it burns. All right, guys, verses 16 through 19, the last thing I'm going to share with y'all today. Y'all are awesome for letting me. For who, having heard, rebelled? Indeed, was it not all who came out of Egypt, led by Moses? Now with whom was he angry forty years? Was it not with those who sinned, whose corpses fell in the wilderness? And to whom did he swear that they would not enter his rest, but to those who did not obey? So we see that they could not enter in because of unbelief. Our final verses shine yet another light warning us against unbelief. We see that neither the blessing of the Egyptian exodus nor the privilege of hearing God's voice are a guarantee to the wilderness wandering generation that they would enter God's rest, the very goal of the pilgrimage. That generation's sin, rebellion, and disobedience were planted in unbelief rooted in a foundation that they had built upon their failure to hold fast to the very promises of God. Guys, let us learn from these mistakes, right? That's why we don't erase our history. It's why we uphold it. It's not that we glorify in all of it, but it is all worth knowing. 
so that the good can be repeated, so that the bad cannot be repeated. Guys, that's why we don't erase our past. That's why God recorded the past for us here, guys. Um, man, hit the subscribe button if you're not subscribed to drop a new video like this six days a week, guys. Give the video a thumbs up if you liked it. Share it if you loved it. If you do, my heart goes out to you guys. I don't want for anyone to not make it to heaven. And I know you feel the same as me, guys, about that. So, um, if you have any prayer requests, any comments, guys, drop those down here into the comment section, man. I love you all so much. Father God loves you much more than that even, guys. Please go out there and have a blessed day.